It's good to be with you all together again today. Uh, it was great last week uh, having uh, some sense of community while watching the service together. And then afterwards we were able to connect on Zoom. Uh, that was great to have that time of connecting. Uh, this week we get to add one more thing to it. We're adding a children's message to it. Uh, so that'll be awesome. That's coming up very soon. We'll have a contemplative reading which seems to be quite fitting, I think, for the season that we're in right now. And we'll pray. And then we're going to hear from God's word. Now receive God's greeting. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all as we're gathering together before him in this digital way as a community, as his people. Now, a children's message with Adrian. Hello, Covenant um, CRC. Okay. We love you and we miss you. Okay. And we thought you might want to hear a story or three. Or so what? Allie and Francis and I want to share some of our favorite stories with you, maybe a couple times a week in the near future. So if you want to join us, we're going to settle in and read some stories from... Jesus! The Jesus Storybook Bible, and some of our other favorites, like, like, The Chronicles of Narnia, maybe? This one, Reading Beauty, Interstellar, Cinderella, I Am Jim Henson, it's a very good book. Dinosaur Dance, uh, La La La, Moo Ba. Moo Ba, La La La. la. The Going to Bed yeah. Book, Happy Hippo, nope. Angry Duck. duck. And wiggles to toes, horns, to, horns to toes, toes. and in between. Mm. If you want to have any suggestions yes. of books that you want us to read, let us know and we'll find them and read them for you. Sound like a fun idea? Okay, we'll see you soon. Can you say goodbye? Goodbye! Bye. That was awesome. I absolutely love it. Uh, if you like that, if your kids like that, uh, there's more of that where that came from. And so actually here is a little bit of a plug for maybe getting some more of that. So uh, again, Adrian, one more time. Hi everyone. This is Ellie and I'm Adrian. We're going to read to you from the Jesus Storybook Bible. This is the story and the song. The heavens are singing about how great God is. And the skies are shouting it out. See what God has made. Day after day, night after night, they are speaking to us. That's a paraphrase of Psalm 19. God wrote, I love you. He wrote it in the sky and on the earth and under the sea. He wrote his message everywhere because God created everything in his world to reflect God. him like a mirror. God. To show us what he's like, to help us to know him, to make our hearts sing. The way a kitten chases her tail, the way red poppies grow wild, the way a dolphin swims. And God put it into words too. He wrote it in a book called... The Jesus Storybook Bible. The, the Bible. Bible. Now some people think the Bible is a book of rules. rules. Telling you what you should and shouldn't do. The Bible certainly does have some rules in it. They show you how life works best. But the Bible isn't mainly about you and what you should be doing. It's about... God. And what he... About what he does. Other people think the Bible is a book about of heroes showing you um, people you should copy. Now the Bible does have lots of uh, heroes in it, but as you'll soon find out, most of the people in the Bible are not like that. They're not heroes at all. Actually, they make some big mistakes, sometimes on purpose. I like Joseph and Mary. They get afraid and run away. I must see Joseph and Mary, okay? Next. At times, they are downright mean. No, the Bible isn't a book of rules or a book of heroes. The Bible is most of all a story. It's an adventure story about a young hero who comes from a far country with, to win back his lost treasure. treasure. It's a love story about a brave prince who leaves his palace, his throne, everything uh, to rescue the one he loves. 
it's like the most wonderful fairy tales that has come true in real life. Yeah, because it's for real, everyone. There are lots of stories in the Bible, but all the stories are telling one big story. Mm -hmm. The story of how God loves his children and comes to rescue them. It takes the whole Bible to tell this story. And at the center of the story, there is a... Uh, well, a hero? A baby. Yep. A baby. A baby boy. Uh, every story in the Bible whispers his name. He's like the missing piece in the puzzle. The puzzle that makes all the other pieces, the piece that makes all the other pieces fit together. And suddenly you can see a beautiful picture. And this is no ordinary baby. This is the child upon whom everything would depend. This is a child who would one day, uh, wait, he, hold on. Our story starts where all good stories start. Right at the very beginning. So, Hey, Covenant. We're going to start off by reading you a devotional here this morning. Called the Valley of Vision. Lord, high and holy, meek and lowly. Thou hast brought me to the valley of vision, where I live in the depths, but see thee in the heights. Hemmed in by mountains of sin, I behold thy glory. Let me learn by paradox that the way down is the way up, that to be low is to be high, that the broken heart is the healed heart, that the contrite spirit is the rejoicing spirit, that the repenting soul is the victorious soul, that to have nothing is to possess all. That to bear the cross is to wear the crown. That to give is to receive. That the valley is the place of vision. Lord, in the daytime, stars can be seen from the deepest wells. And the deeper the wells, the brighter thy stars shine. Let me find thy light. In my darkness. Thy life. In my death. Thy joy. In my sorrow. Thy grace. In my sin. Thy riches. In my poverty. Thy glory. In my valley. Thanks. Have a great service. Thank you, Emily and Nate. That was very much a, a good prayer and contemplative reading for us today. Uh, for God to carry us through our valley of vision that we are in. The devotional that they were reading out of, by the way, is uh, this, the valley of vision. And um, it's one of my favorite uh, devotionals. Uh, webcams are pretty much sold out online, but uh, I think there's still some copies of this. So I uh, really encourage you to maybe pick this up. Uh, nevertheless, let us go to the Lord now in prayer. Oh, great God, this is the day that you have made. We rejoice and are glad in it. We thank you that in all circumstances, we always have reason for joy. Through your indwelling Holy Spirit, and because of your promises, which you are always faithful to, help us to trust you in these trying times. Our jobs and schooling are affected. Employers, employees, students, and parents. Our rhythms are all mixed up. Our relationships have shifted. Some of us are ill are concerned with those who are ill. Fear and anxiety is gripping many hearts. Guide us, Lord. Protect us, Lord. And in strange ways, bless us and grow us in faith. Take these times, use them for the good of us, your people who love you. Grant wisdom and efficacy to our leaders. Keep them well in body, and well in mind. Be with our hospitals and medical staff for what they are currently dealing with and will yet face. We lift all the hurting to you. We think especially of those in Italy and New York and other places experiencing such exponential growth of this virus. Lord, we lift up our prayers to you. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. Amen. If you go online today uh, to a news source, the top story, the second top story, the third top story, 
The fourth top story is all about uh, COVID-19. Maybe the fifth, the sixth, the seventh might be about something not related to COVID-19. It's, it's just so strange. I've never seen it like this where the whole world seems to be on about one thing. Uh, you know, there's been other very significant times, but, but nothing like this where all the stories are all about this one thing and not just in our nation, but they're across the whole world. And we're all affected by this same one thing. You know, we hear about COVID-19 from this news source, that news source, this social media feed, that new news feed, uh, social media feed, uh, this friend, that friend from our neighbors. It's, it's, it's all around us. And the thing is, though, is that we should be listening to it. We should actually have our ears attuned to this stuff because uh, I, I think that the awareness of it is actually helping to do exactly what we're hoping to do is to flatten the curve. And I, I think that the reason why we don't have uh, an outbreak in the kind of way that is experienced in, in other places is because of the measures that have been taken. I just try to think about what it would be like if we uh, didn't have these measures in place. Where would we be? So I, I think that this, uh, these measures that we're taking are actually helping. Um, we all, when it comes to like these news sources, we ought to be careful, I think, in my opinion, to not get all of our news from one source, though, right? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm on the lookout for the truly balanced news source, and I just, I just can't find it. You know, it's, uh, you know, I, I think the best way for us is to get uh, news sources from a real conservative side, from a liberal side, and and, and somehow try to figure out how to discern uh, somewhere in there where the, the truth is. And, you know, the less sensationalized, the, the best. But, you know, I guess that seems to me to be about the, the best answer, a decent answer, given our flawed humanity and therefore our flawed uh, news outlets in that sense. Uh, we wouldn't need that answer if we did have actual perfect and always honest and always true uh, news sources, but, but we don't. Nevertheless, we just have all of these inputs you know, from all over the place, whether they're sensationalized or they're accurate, um, uh, they can be worrisome. They can cause fear and anxiety. They can produce that within us. We do though, however, have actually uh, a an honest, a perfect, a true source of information and guidance for our most pressing needs. And that is the word of God. To sound cliche, it's just, it's, it's true. You know, in, in God's word, in his word, we, we don't get the details. You, well, you do. In, in uh, Hezekiah chapter 3, verse 15, um, uh, it, it talks about the upcoming COVID virus. I'm just kidding. Hezekiah is not a real book of the Bible. He's a king, right? Uh, if you ever want to make something up in the Bible, say it comes from Hezekiah. So um, that's kind of a fun way to go. But anyway, um, it, it, it does, the Bible does, however, teach us about the nature of people's hearts. It teaches us about uh, the problems that we continue to face in these world, in this world, uh, our need of Christ, uh, guidance on how to move forward in uncertain times, and giving us comfort in troubling uh, times. So we need to go to the word uh, today uh, for guidance. But before we do that, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for all your gifts to us. We thank you that we have, God, your words here in this scripture. We thank you, uh, Jesus Christ, for coming, living, teaching us. We're going to be reading words that you said while you were here on earth in this way, in human form. We just, we just, we just thank you for that. Uh, and we need your help to hear your voice. Without your aid, Holy Spirit, enlivening in us so that we can actually understand, not just hear it, but, but really hear it. 
We need your help for that. And so will you be with us in this time as we look at your word? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the passage that we're looking at today is found in John chapter 10, and it's just one verse. And actually, I encourage you to memorize it. Just memorize it with me. I'm going to say it a couple times, and I want you to say it with me. Uh, the, the verse is this. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. So words of Jesus, the great shepherd. Say it with me now. Just, just repeat it back. Uh, talk into the computer or the TV, whatever you're watching this on. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. One last time, my sheep, listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Beautiful, beautiful words. My sheep, listen to my voice. Do you hear his voice? What ways do you hear his voice? Now, be honest, I've never heard like the audible voice of Jesus. I haven't been walking in the woods and, and I just hear this angelic type of voice or something like that saying, Matt, this is Jesus and this is what I want you to know. You know, but I do hear his voice. I, he does speak to me in beautiful ways, but as his word is in my, my mind and it's in my heart, um, uh, the scriptures are the way that I know his voice. Uh, I, I know exactly what Jesus has said. When I read or hear his words in scripture, and it, it resonates then with me. You know, so not only do I hear it, but I, I, I hear it. I hear his voice because I'm one of his sheep. Do you hear his voice? Because he does speak. You know, the Pharisees who are in this passage, uh, John chapter 10, um, they audibly heard his voice, but they didn't like Jesus. They didn't like what he was saying. And, and so uh, they, they fought against it. It actually sounded acoustic to them. It just sounded terrible. And, and when, when people heard Jesus speak, many in the crowd, it just sounded beautiful. It's like everything that I've wanted to hear, I'm hearing now. Everything that I've needed to hear, it's so true. And, and I hear it now. However, for the Pharisees, um, a lot of them would hear when Jesus was speaking, just wah, 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 or just wah, hey, you. And it, it, it was, they heard it, but they, but they couldn't hear it, right? Just like Jesus also gets at them in many times where he calls them blind. They're spiritually blind. They could see physically, but they were spiritually blind. They could hear audibly, but they were, they were uh, spiritually deaf. The words of Jesus, do they sound true to you? Because he's speaking, and I plead with you to listen to his voice. And by the way, when he's saying this in this passage, he's talking as a shepherd, the good shepherd, who speaks to his sheep who he loves, who he knows, who follow him. And then that third part, or that second part is, and I know them. My sheep listen to my voice, and, and I know them. I just, I just love that. This is a picture of the good shepherd, a good shepherd. Uh, we're not just a bunch of sheep with tags in our ears that have a number beside them, and, and we're just counted as numbers. Uh, we're known. We're known to, to the great shepherd. He knows us. He loves us. He actually lays down his life for us, which is just mind-boggling. My sheep hear my voice, Jesus says. I know them, and they follow me. You know, and this follow me piece, it, it goes hand in hand with everything we talk about when we talk about faith and works. You know, 
theologically, we know this, uh, and in, 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 in Christian faith, we know this, that your works do not save you. You are not right with God because of your works. But if you are saved and if you are a child of God, you will naturally produce good fruit. You will naturally love. You will naturally live more in the way that is becoming to the calling to which you've been given. You know, so too, uh, it's not just because that you're, uh, you know, it's not just because a sheep follows a shepherd that that sheep becomes the shepherd's sheep. Does that make sense? The, the shepherd's sheep follow the shepherd because they're the shepherd's sheep. You don't get to be the shepherd's sheep just because you follow the shepherd. You follow the shepherd because you are the shepherd's sheep. That's, that's what's being said here. But in order to, to follow the shepherd, we need to hear his voice. And if we listen to the shepherd, what kind of things would he say? What kind of things would the shepherd say? And, you know, thing is, is that we don't actually have to guess. There's no guessing about that question. Because they're right here in Scripture. You know? So what I want to do is I want to take some time now, and I want to just read to you some of the words of the shepherd. We're in a time and a season where we have so many voices telling us information, facts, uh, how you should approach this thing or that thing, what you should do, how you should feel. But if we profess to be Christian, we, we actually are professing that we're just sheep. And I think we just need to listen to the shepherd. So that's really what I want the bulk of this time to be, is just, just sheep listening to a shepherd. And so I want to read his voice, because his voice, in the midst of all of these other voices, should be the loudest and the clearest voice of all the voices that we hear. You may have heard about a, the dark and the grim pictures of New York. And uh, I recently heard it compared to like Armageddon, whatever that might be, feel like, or whatever is the image of that. And, and it's just uh, a very dark place. And I, and I believe it. I believe that's true. With that in mind, listen to this. When Jesus says, in chapter 8 of John, chapter 8, verse 12, he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And that's just beautiful. You know, elsewhere in John, John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. The, the words of Jesus comforting his disciples. He said, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, that's good. Believe also in me, he says. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know, notice that the majority, the vast majority of the comforting scriptures, uh, passages of scripture, uh, find their ultimate fulfillment in the hereafter. You now, without an eternal mindset, like almost all of this doesn't really make sense. Like, Really, I, this doesn't have much comfort if there's not an eternit, eternality to it all. all the, the, when, when there is, you know, a pestilence will not strike you or whatever, your foot will not slip, you, you, you will not die. All those things have to be understood in the context of an eternal mindset. So too, faith in Jesus will not necessarily keep you from the coronavirus. 
you, you may get sick and you may die and it may be a terrible death. I don't, I don't know. But, you know, God can protect us. He can heal us if we get sick. He, he does do that sometimes in the here and the now. And, and uh, sometimes he does it in those ways. And, and sometimes he doesn't. But we have to make sure that when we read these comforting words of Scripture, we understand that this is in the context of eternity. So continuing on, the next uh, chapter, John chapter 15. Jesus says in the first five verses there, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Beautiful words. Uh, next chapter, uh, John chapter 16. Again, the disciples are... are um, needing to hear things from their leader, from their Lord. And, and he's telling them things uh, that are true, telling them things to comfort them. And, and then in chapter 16, verse 33, uh, he says, I told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Because in this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. You know, it's, it's not just in John that we have comforting words of Christ. We read them in the Gospel of Luke, or Mark as well, uh, Matthew as well. I'm going, flipping back, and so my, you know, mine saw Luke and then Mark. But yeah, I, was, I wanted to go to Matthew. But it's not just in Matthew and John. It's, it's in Luke and Mark and all the passages of Scripture. But I want to read... Uh, to you, Matthew chapter 6, Jesus preaching in the Sermon on the Mount, verse 25 and following. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God, God clothes the grasses of the field, which are here today and tomorrow, they're thrown into the fire. Will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And Jesus is certainly there to help us in that trouble. You know, I, I can't read that verse without thinking of another verse in uh, Philippians. Uh, Philippians chapter uh, 4, verses 4 through 7. This is a, a sheep of the shepherd, who's also an under-shepherd of a smaller flock in Philippi. Paul writes this letter to them, and they needed encouragement. They really did. They had hard times. They had real hard times. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, 
which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Beautiful words. You know, there's also the Great Commission going back to Matthew, the end of it. Matthew chapter 28, where Jesus says to his disciples before he leaves, he says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And so he says, therefore, go and make disciples baptizing of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you even to the very end of the age. We have the promise of his presence and he is always faithful to deliver on his promises. Now this is all started in the context of the good shepherd. He says, you know, again, remember the verse here, let's, let's practice this again. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Now, when you think about Jesus as the good shepherd, you think about being a sheep trying to follow your shepherd. What other passage of scripture do you think of? Let's write Psalm, Psalm 23. Psalm 23. The best way to, to read or to listen to this passage is this. Just think of your sheep, yourself as a sheep. Just, just say it, bah, bah, you know, get your best bah out there. And, and uh, somebody asks you, tell me, about, tell me about your shepherd. Who is he? And you said, bah. And then that would be translated into something like this. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along right paths for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup, it overflows. Surely goodness and love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Beautiful, beautiful words. The passage that we started with, I'd like to go back to it and end with the, uh, the next verse. You know, my, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. He says, I give them eternal life. Remember that understanding. It all has to be understood in the context of eternality. And they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hands. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Let the words of Christ calm your anxious heart. You know, with all the many voices, the inputs, the information today, we need a voice that is louder and clearer than any other voice out there. That's the voice of the shepherd to lead us through this. I, I encourage you to just get passages of scripture, get God's word deep into you, into your mind, into your heart. Take this time, right? Create a Bible reading plan. Logos Bible app, use the YouVersion Bible app. Maybe your actual paper Bible, they still work. The printed page. You know, get a Bible reading plan. Maybe, maybe read all the Gospels in the next couple few weeks. Read all the passion narratives as you're going up uh, closer to the time of, of uh, the end of Lent, getting up into Easter, Easter time. Read them all from Matthew through John. You know, maybe uh, memorize Psalm 23. 
If you've never memorized it before, this is a great time. I just really challenge you. I encourage you, memorize Psalm 23. Just get it into your heart. That's beautiful. You know, uh, during this time, there's a family within our church, and they're memorizing all of Psalm 91. They're trying to memorize one verse per day. I think it's beautiful. It's awesome. Keep going. During his earthly ministry, Jesus went from town to town, healing people, bringing life. And he went to broken. He went to hurting people. And, and those kind of people were all around. Those kind of people are all around. And we read in Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, that when he saw them, he saw these broken people, and he had compassion for them because they were harassed and they were helpless like sheep without a shepherd, like sheep without a shepherd. They were lost sheep because they were tossed about from here to there with voices from the Pharisees, Sadducees, uh, those voices, Greco-Roman thought, those theologies, those ideologies, all trying to get into their minds and into their hearts and not, they're asking for acceptance of these ideologies, but they're not giving any sure answers. And so his heart breaks for them. And what's Jesus' response? Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out the laborers into the harvest. That there would be those people who know the truth to go out and to proclaim the truth. That's that's our calling. Dear Christian, brother, and sister, know your shepherd. Know his voice. Know the words that he said. Don't just hear them, hear them. He's still speaking. And if you're not listening to his voice, listen to his voice. Listen. You can hear other voices. It's good to get other inputs and, and hear that stuff, hear the news and, and all that stuff. But we need his voice to be the loudest and the clearest. COVID-19, uh, this too shall pass. But the word of God stands forever. with the truth of his word firmly rooted in your heart as a sheep who knows his shepherd because the shepherd knows you. Listen then to the leading of the Spirit so that when the Spirit opens up a door for someone who is full of trouble, full of anxiety, a lost sheep looking for answers, you can then be there to say words that can help guide them. You can then be, as we as the church are to be, salt and light in a dark world that desperately needs what we have the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, Jesus Christ. We thank you for coming, for living a perfect life for us, for dying a perfect death for us, for rising from the dead, victorious. And in you we have victory. And that you are our Lord, you are our friend, you are our shepherd. Holy Spirit, help us to be the people that we are to be for your glory, God. Lead us, guide us, help us to hear your voice, O great shepherd. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for spending this time with us, I, I can say.
uh, many people watching this video uh, as this is our church service. We have a job to do. You may be isolated distantly, but hopefully not socially. And I know that a lot of you are very social in this time. And I think that's awesome. Stay social. Stay distant. But you go out in a way, at least digitally, but go out with the blessing of God. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. All God's people say, Amen. Thank you. And also, by the way, for some of you, I think we're going to be doing some Zoom chatting after this. Go in peace and serve the Lord.